This week on the show, we have the director of Wolfhound, Michael B. Chase. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that change can feel uncomfortable, scary, and even painful when you initially start. But the reality is, it's not in the times we tried and failed that is the source of our pain, but rather it's the regret of never trying at all. The truth is, doing anything outside your comfort zone doesn't feel pleasant when you start, as our brains remind us of all the possibilities and dangers that can unfold to prevent us from experiencing pain. But when you begin to realize that change is the only constant and it's completely essential for your growth and progress, the idea of change then becomes less scarier as we become more keen to tackle our fears daily. Successful people dwell in possibility and don't allow the initial feelings of uncomfort stop them from pushing the boundaries of their comfort zone. They push through the fear and dwell in the possibility that taking a risk will bring an even greater reward. Make it your mission today to commit to tackling a goal that you've been procrastinating on doing because of the fear of the unknown. Whether that's booking a trip to travel or switching careers to something you're more passionate about, take the leap. As Deval Gaudier quotes, the only thing that is stopping you from where you are to where you want to go is your comfort zone. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And let's talk about your movie, Wolfhound. I mean, it's an incredible movie. I had a chance to watch it um, and it's uh, produced by Lionsgate as well. So let's talk about that. That's huge, congratulations. Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm like genuinely uh, thank you for watching it, and I'm thrilled that you liked it. I loved um, it. Yeah. It was it was definitely the definition of blood, sweat, and tears to get it done, and um, uh, the way that the way that that movie started is uh, actually from a commercial in uh, 2013. Um, I was lucky enough to be directing a commercial for the Yankee Air Museum in Michigan, and uh, they have a B-17. Flying Fortress bomber from World War II, wow. beautifully restored, like it looks brand new. And uh, there's only nine of those planes left flying in the entire world today. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Michael B. Chait, the director of the World War II action movie thriller, Wolfhound, released by Lionsgate, featuring James Maslow and Trevor Donovan. One man can make an impact on this war. Just maybe not the way you think. Too easy. No! Let her rip! Nazi violence! Michael, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you so much again for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to talk about Wolfhound. I actually watched the movie. It's incredible, by the way. But before we get into your success, let's talk about your story and your passion for storytelling. I know it started when you saw The Rock at the age of 12. So tell us about that. That's very true. Uh, you have done your homework. So uh, what happened was, um, as a little kid, uh, I originally thought, okay, I either want to be an actor or I want to be a fighter pilot. And I think that, you know, um, fighter pilot came from my father, uh, Steve Chait. He is a pilot in real life. Uh, and so I was exposed to aviation from a very young age. Uh, and then as soon as I saw The Rock directed by Michael Bay when I was 12, something literally went like that in my head and i'm just like oh my god like i've never noticed um the camera work the lighting the movement the style the the tone the emotion uh of what the director was doing in a movie uh as much as i did when i saw that and i just thought like that is what i have to do for the rest of my life <laughs> like, oh, like that wow. just, 
it connected with me immediately and I've just been on that journey ever since. And you know, since then you've had extensive uh, director experience. I know that you directed a video for Apple the Ape from the Black Eyed Peas who we also had on the show. So let's talk about that experience. Well, that was, uh, that came out of nowhere. Um, two weeks before we shot it, I got a phone call from a friend in LA uh, and uh, I bet them through some of my other misadventures out there <laughs> trying to get into the film business. Uh, and he said, hey, we have this cool music video uh, and we want you to direct it for Apple. And I was just like, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> like I didn't even I don't I didn't know what the song was. I didn't know any details. And they were like, OK, you need to be out here in two weeks and you need to plan the whole thing. And here you go. And so as soon as I hung up, I'm like, oh, God, this is a lot. to <laughs> this is a lot to put together. But um, he turned out to be one of the coolest artists that I've worked with. Um, his like every single take he did and I'm not just saying this to 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 blow smoke up his behind like <laughs> he was effortless it was just like okay do this and do that and it was just like clockwork um, and the the song was called Mama Filipina and it was about his mother and she actually makes a cameo uh, in the video and she was there on the set with us oh, um, nice. and we shot it in like two or three days in a, a crazy schedule in LA and uh, I'm still really proud of it today. Mm. Well, we had him on the show and he's, I can attest to that. He is a great person, uh, very genuine and authentic. So I can imagine it was great working with him. <laughs> it, it was. The only thing I kind of regret uh, is, um, and I, I don't think I've told this publicly, but you remember uh, the Nintendo Wii and Wii Bowling specifically? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he had, he had a Wii at his house. And I was like, oh, I noticed you have this. And I challenged him to a game of bowling and I kept beating him and he had to catch a flight. And his assistant and his manager was like, Apple, you need to stop playing the game. Like we need to get you to the airport. And he's like, no, I'm beating this kid. <laughs> I just kept, <laughs> oh, wow. I kept, so I kind of, you know, sorry, Apple, all these years <laughs> later. <laughs> I, I want to talk about what were some the first steps you took to get into the entertainment industry? Because obviously it's a very difficult industry to get into. It really is. And uh, I mean, I wish there was a a ladder, you know, to get in um, like many other industries like, OK, you start at A and then you go to B. And even though some some unions and some uh, trades within film and entertainment do have more of a ladder system, it's different for everybody. And uh, what I did is um, first thing I did was I started making movies in my backyard you know with my friends in uh, high school and every weekend that I possibly could like convince people let's make a short film let's do this or that and that was just to teach myself the basics uh, and then I went to film school at Columbia College mm -hmm. Chicago mm -hmm. um, that was invaluable both because of the the things I learned that I didn't know I didn't know mm -hmm. uh, but even more so uh, the friends you make and the crew and you know i'm sure you've heard this like networking is everything it really is because mm -hmm. like uh i think five or six of the the key like department heads on wolfhound um my writing partner one of the producers the editor the dp the composer the visual effects supervisor i went to college with all of them oh wow and, you know those, like, yeah and those relationships really you know if you find the right group of people uh that's you know one way in because you know eventually somebody's going to hit something and then hopefully bring the team uh but really what i did after college was i just i jumped into doing any commercials and music videos that i could uh and it started small and eventually i kind of got larger clients uh and once i got um enough of a reel together that looked you know cool and exciting uh and also had some good you know solid pieces of work dramatically uh, I was able to start pitching hey who wants to help me make a movie mm -hmm. uh, and so it's just one thing kind of led into another but um, I gotta say like the, the the biggest thing is and I'm not trying to sound cheesy but it's it's very hard there's a lot of no's there's a lot of doors that close in your face and not taking no for an answer and just having the passion and the fire to just keep trying no matter what 
Um, you know, like this is my first movie. I'm 37. Some people are lucky enough to have their first movie at 22. You know, uh, but I just I I didn't give up and I just I kept at it and now I'm talking to you. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, incredible. I I love everything you said. It's so true. First of all, this industry is so small. So even for me, um, one of the first TV stations I worked at. Uh, my producer actually was someone I went to college with. <laughs> it's so it's such a really? small world. Yeah, it's such a small world, and I love that you started small. You said that you would film, you know, mini videos in your backyard, and you you worked on your craft, right? Because that's also important. It's not just to expect to get into the industry, and you know, you're not going to get a film right away. There, it's a process. You really have to put in the work. As you said, no. I always say no means next opportunity. So I love that you said that. You just have to have the grit, the tr determination, and here we are. So I think everything that you said is incredible. And let's talk about your movie, Wolfhound. I mean, it's an incredible movie. I had a chance to watch it, um, and it's uh, produced by Lionsgate as well. So let's talk about that. That's huge. Congratulations. Thank you so much, and I'm like genuinely uh, thank you for watching it, and I'm thrilled that you liked it. I loved um, it, yeah. it was it was definitely the definition of blood, sweat, and tears to get it done. And um, uh, the way that the way that that movie started is uh, actually from a commercial in uh, 2013. Oh. Um, I was lucky enough to be directing a commercial for the Yankee Air Museum in Michigan, and uh, they have a B-17. Flying Fortress bomber from World War II, wow. beautifully restored, like it looks brand new. And uh, there's only nine of those planes left flying in the entire world today. Uh, so it's like literally a historical artifact. And I stepped on board uh, because I was location scouting and trying to plan out, you know, the best camera shots and what we're going to do. And I'm not exaggerating, like a wall of emotion hit me when I stepped onto the plane because I literally, I was looking at the same spaces on the floor where the real, you know, 18, 19 year old guys in World War II were standing, mm -hmm. fighting, you know, the Nazis. And, you know, many of them uh, either getting wounded or, you know, giving their lives for, for literally the freedom of the world. And I thought two things, I thought, okay, this commercial has to be really good. Uh, and I also thought, like, I think there's a movie here. I think that I can make something out of this. Uh, and so we wrote a screenplay based around a bomber crew. Uh, and then that evolved into, you know, basing it around a Jewish fighter pilot. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a Jewish man. I come from a very, you know, a Jewish family with strong roots in Detroit and in, in Canada, which yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about very shortly. And um, I wanted to feature a strong... Uh, Jewish character and really present that as our lead uh, and that's who James Maslow plays and um, I, I just really wanted to make something that both honored those guys and honored the greatest generation but also like my favorite movies are like 80s and 90s action movies mm -hmm. right and so um, I wanted to do something I've never really seen before which was kind of merge like a golden age of Hollywood you know war movie from the 30s and 40s uh, which is very old fashioned uh, with like, you know, stuff like, you know, Schwarzenegger and Stallone movies mm -hmm. and Top Gun mm -hmm. and Star Wars. And uh, so it's a very interesting mixture. Uh, and the, the first step was writing the script with my partner, my writing partner, Tim Ritchie, uh, who I went to school with. And um, he wrote a beautiful screenplay. Uh, and then the next step was we had to cast it. Uh, and then finally we got to James. So I, I started researching James. And we sent him the offer, and it was on his grandfather's birthday, which we did oh, wow. not know. And his grandfather flew B-17s in World War II. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it was like serendipity. <laughs> and he, he was like, I think I need to do this movie. And, and um, we talked on the phone, and literally the next day we were in pre-production making the movie. Like, it happened like that. Uh, but, you know, after, like, four or five years of, of going for it uh so it was not overnight but again just we persisted at it um and as soon as we got his yes uh everything just started flowing and we were shooting like three months later wow that's quite the story i actually also interviewed james when he was in toronto he was doing a play called sherlock uh, with David Arquette really? and I had a chance yeah I had a chance to meet him and he's also a very humble attentive 
authentic person. So I love that he plays the main character in this movie. And I have to say, from the beginning to the end of the movie, um, I was on the edge of my seat. Everything was so beautifully directed. It was really an, an amazing movie. So I really, congratulations again, because uh, I know this was your first major film and it, it's quite the film. And let's talk about the partnership with Lionsgate. That's incredible. I'm, I'm literally still <laughs> pitching myself that that happened. Uh, so, um, and first of all, James, everything you said is true. He's become a very good friend of mine and he, he's just, he's the coolest like um you know he's very down to earth uh he's just like a, a good guy at heart and like a very just like normal regular guy like even though he has you know the the rock star pop star life like he's james like yeah. he, he, and that's so cool like i love i love working with people like that mm. um but uh lionsgate actually happened um out of nowhere and like oh. i was praying for Lionsgate for years because we made the movie uh, without any distribution deal. We made it totally independent um, and that's kind of risky but it's like I kind of knew like for us to pull this off we kind of need to just do it and then say here it is because like I didn't think anyone would believe that what I was like telling them and what I had in my mind would be possible on a lower budget mm -hmm. uh, and so once we had the final um, version of the movie uh, through some mutual friends of Sue, our producing partner, um, they got it to Lionsgate uh, through a guy named Mike Rudnitsky, who's a longtime, uh, you know, person in the in the distribution world in Hollywood. And uh, the right person at Lionsgate, Stan Wortlieb, saw it, uh, and he's produced like almost like 150 movies. Uh, he's ridiculous, and um, he called me up. He said. I really liked the movie, uh, and we just we talked about, you know, three or four times, uh, and we got a friendship going as well. And he finally said, "Okay, you know what? I really love the movie. I'm gonna pitch it to the like the board of Lionsgate." And of course, wow. I went like, "Oh God, okay, <laughs> you know, like it's yeah. like I have to breathe into a paper bag." Uh, <laughs> and they loved it, uh, and everyone started like getting excited about it. Uh, and that was about nine months ago uh, and working with them towards the release just to to get it in theaters to get it you know the right artwork the right marketing the trailer like and they did a fantastic job with everything um, it's honestly been like a very surreal half a year because like every day I'm waking up like is this really happening like is our movie really going out with Lionsgate now like is this really gonna be our distributor and um, I won't lie, like it was in theaters a few weeks ago and I kind of like went to a few theaters in the back row, you know, just to like watch people's reactions. And when it comes up like on the screen, I'm just yeah. like, I can't believe this is in a theater. Like this is, this is literally a dream come true. Yeah, even when I saw your name when it first started, I felt excited. I was like, wow, this is, <laughs> you know, I, I, I felt excited for you because I mean, it's a big deal, especially your first feature film that's such a big deal to have Lionsgate um, as a partner and it, it's such an incredible movie so and how does it feel to see all of your, the fruits of your labor come to fruition with this movie and seeing the final product absolutely nuts <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I literally remember the experience of shooting it like it was yesterday and um, you know behind the scenes it was definitely, you know, a smaller crew and a smaller, um, you know, just a smaller set in general most of the time uh, than you would think for the scale that we did. And I've always loved big action and big movies and big visuals. So, like, we worked overtime to make it look like there was, like, 500 people there, you know, every day. But um, sometimes there was, like, 30 people, you know, mm. sometimes 100 people. And so, like, just just like remembering the experience of filming it and, and just going through post-production during the pandemic, uh, which I mean, that definitely slowed things yeah. down. Uh, and we did all our post-production remotely. Uh, my editor, Shanina Maria, who did an amazing job, she edited in Los Angeles while I'm in Michigan. And uh, we did every, a lot of stuff over Zoom and Skype. And, you know, um, it was definitely a process. But like now that it's out, 
Um, honestly, like surreal doesn't even cover mm -hmm. it because like I've literally been dreaming of this since I was 12 years old. Yeah. And to see, you know, my first movie uh, up on a screen and to see it on Amazon Prime and on Apple and all the streamers and it's like, oh my God, like the public is watching it now. It's just like, it's, it's like, I, I don't want, I don't want to sound, um, you know, too, too Hollywood, so to <laughs> speak, but like, it is so awesome. Like it is the coolest yeah. thing ever, but it's also just, it's really weird, you know, yeah. like sitting at home thinking like, huh, I wonder how many people are watching this right now. You know, yeah. and it's just, uh, it, it's a blessing. I couldn't be more thankful. Mm -hmm. And it just shows, right? That hard work pays off. If you keep at it, eventually you will see success, right? If you just keep at it yeah. and you keep working. So I, I think this is a living proof of that. You know, James was an amer amazing character, but also Trevor, I've never seen him as a villain. So this was really interesting to see Trevor as a villain. Um, and I think he did an amazing job. So let's talk about his character as well. Well, Trevor Donovan, um, he, <laughs> he is awesome. Uh, he's, he's also become uh, a close friend and in real life, he is the nicest person in the world. He's nothing like his character in this yeah. movie. Uh, and that's actually one of the reasons he was excited about it. No one's ever really had him play a bad guy. Yeah. And, you know, he's he's so famous for not only 90210, uh, but all the Hallmark movies and the, mm -hmm. the Lifetime movies. Uh, and I've seen, like, you know, I think five or six of them by now, because uh, he's in, like, two or three every year. And um, he was so excited to step out of that zone and and just like show his range as an actor. Uh, and the character is a really despicable person. I yeah. mean, he's vicious. He's like the epitome of just a Nazi bad guy. And um, it's actually a, like it's an interesting story how he joined the film. Another actor was originally cast as the villain. Uh, but unfortunately, they had they had a medical issue and they had to drop out of filming, and uh, we had like, you know, four days to replace him, uh, and we were scrambling like we didn't know what to do and like we're filming, uh, and I'm filming scenes and we don't know who our who our lead villain is, and so the, like that was a little a little stressful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've heard <laughs> of that happening on like hundred million dollar movies, but like they can kind of they can afford that a little bit more. Uh, so James actually said, you know what? I got the perfect guy. And it was a friend, uh, a director uh, out in LA that said, you gotta use Trevor Donovan. And I got on the phone with him and I talked with him for an hour. And like literally four days later, he had learned a German accent. Oh, wow. uh, the costumes were like altered for him. Uh, he built the character uh, in his mind wow. and he stepped on the set and the very first thing he had to do was the scene with the most dialogue in the whole movie. Yeah. And I felt so bad because it's like, oh God, we can't reschedule it. Like this, he has to do it. Yeah. Um, and after the first take, I was just like, oh, thank God, this guy's amazing. Um, and he was just like, he was, he was so cool and so on and so nasty. Like he was so <laughs> yeah. mean in the movie. Uh, and he was actually worried like, you know, I don't know how my fans are going to react to this, but then I've seen a lot of people saying like, oh my God, you're, you were so great as the villain. And like the weirdest comment, this is so like, this this is mind blowing to me. I'll go on YouTube like, oh, Trevor, I loved you as a Nazi so much. And it's like, <laughs> that sounds a little weird, but I know yeah. what they meant. <laughs> I actually was really surprised to see his character because I'm used to seeing him in the Hallmark Channel and, you know, all of those um, romances. So it was actually really interesting to see him step out of the character and do something out of his comfort zone, right? So I loved it, actually. <laughs> awesome. And Michael, I want to talk about, you know, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, uh, and showcase success stories like yours. So for maybe one of our viewers watching, um, that's not seeing the success, that's putting the hard work in, but not seeing, you know, the fruits of their labor, so to speak. What would you say to encourage, uplift them to, you know, continue following their dreams? Well, <clears throat> filmmaking is definitely one of the harder businesses to get in. Uh, and I mean, I think, you know, music, acting, theater, you know, anything in the arts, 
um, and this certainly happened to me, uh, and I think it happens to everybody, when you decide, I want to go into the entertainment business, uh, and you really believe in yourself, there's always going to be a bunch of people that say, oh, that's not a good idea. You should, you should be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, you know, something that's like more stable with a nine to five and a paycheck. And honestly, I think the, the, the very first piece of advice and the best piece that, that I could give, uh, and this is still true for me today, you have to never stop believing in yourself. You have to like, and I know that sounds like a, a fortune cookie message, but it's like literally you need to keep that fire you need to keep that passion and that drive and whatever inspired you to want to go in to whatever field or, or chase the passion or the dream that you're going for don't ever forget it and always remember that feeling always like call it back in your mind if you're having doubts like i have doubts every day you know everybody does spielberg has doubts before every movie um you know there were times when we were filming where i'm like Oh my God! How how are we going to even complete this? And we're falling behind schedule, and we're losing the light, and this isn't going well. That it's like there's going to be ups and downs along the way, and um, it took me a long time. You know, it was a long journey, but along the way, I really treasure you know everything that I ever filmed, everything that I ever you know every meeting I've had, every person that I've gotten to be friends with, you know, as I've climbed up that ladder, and I think like. There's always going to be someone saying no. There, there's going to be more people telling you no than yes. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many people said, oh, don't make Wolfhound. That's too hard. Start with something smaller. Start with something that's not so crazy and that's less expensive, even though we were on a shoestring for what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and truly, it's like you need, to, you need to listen to your heart and your soul and tune that out and do it anyway. Because eventually something is going to happen. Like, it's like, you don't know when there's no way. I mean, I was hoping it would have happened sooner for myself, but I wouldn't trade how it happened for mm. the world. And I think that's the, that's honestly the best advice that I have is like, just keep going, you know, don't stop. Oh, that, that's great advice. I got goosebumps. <laughs> you saying you that. Sure? Yeah, because it, it's, <laughs> it's so true. It resonates with me because it's such true advice, especially, you know, sometimes you have to listen to your own voice and not everyone knows what's best for you or what you have envisioned in your mind, right? So you have to believe in yourself and keep going and stick to the plan. You know, even if you're not seeing results right away, keep, if you keep working, it will happen. So I, I think that's great advice. Michael, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations again on all your success. Wolfhound is an amazing movie and I can't wait to have you back on the show for your next big <laughs> movie. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and I guess I talked too much to, to get to it, but shout out to my Canadian half of the family uh, <laughs> around the Toronto area. <laughs> I mean, the CN Tower is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you're in oh, Toronto, you have to come into the studio. <laughs> Absolutely. You bet. It sounds great. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you